right, so we're take, starting a new course. Uh, it's called General Topology. And for this course, we're going to get through some topics. So first, we're going to get through topological spaces. And then after that, this is a big chapter already. And then we're going to talk about continuous functions in topological spaces. <laughs> and then we're going to discuss important important properties such as like compactness and connectedness and topological spaces and if i have time if i want to do this i might um include topics like countability axioms and Erzon metrization theorem these are like if i have time all right if i have time but these four topics are fundamental um in future advanced math topics and we we must know these uh topologies uh knowledges so to make sure that you won't stuck while studying advanced topics such as like manifolds such as multivariable analysis such as like real analysis functional analysis complex analysis so many of them all right so let's start with topological spaces so many you guys might heard of the word topology before, but what is exactly a topology? Right? The definition of a topological spaces. Like what the hell is that? The definition is now standard, but is a long time ago being formulated. Uh through like various mathematicians. Like like one of the uh one of why I know the most is Hausdorff. Right, and mathematicians they want the definition for topology to be broad enough, so it will include like special case special spaces such as the Euclidean spaces, right? Such as R n, such as the functional spaces. But they also want the definition to be narrow enough, such as such that like the properties important properties holds and the spaces we're familiar with also holds and the topology spaces right so like this is like the thing when, when mathematicians trying to for formulate a new like concepts right we want it to be broad enough such that it covers all special cases and also narrow enough such that the the good thing we know and like the thing we're familiar with also holds in general all right, so it turned out the definition of a topological space is very, very abstract. So here's the definition. A topology on a set. So we're giving a set first. On a set, it's a collection of subsets of X. So basically, it's a subset of the power subset. It's a, it's a power set. It's, it's a subset of the power set, right? It's a subset. It's a collection of subsets but as having three properties. So first, the empty set and the set itself are in the topology. And the union, the arbitrary union, is still, is still closed under arbitrary union. And it is closed under finite intersection. Okay? The union of elements of any subcollection is still empty. And the intersection of any finite intersection of finite subcollection is in T. And a set for which the topology T has been specified called topological spaces. <laughs> so if we have a U as a subset of X, we said U is open in X or U, U is open set means that U is in the topology. So here's a quick example. So let X have three elements, A, B, C. There are many topology on X. These are all like topologies, right? Wait, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Um, the diagram, upper upper right-hand corner. The open set is just X and empty set. Top right. Oh, this is left. I'm oh, sorry. Right, sorry, here, okay. A, B. Yes, this is A, B. B, B, C, empty set, and X, right? So this is a topology. And... This is just X and the empty set. <laughs> Lower right hand corner, this is like every subset of X, right? A, B, C, 
So A B A C B C and the whole set X. Right? So there are many many possible topologies. So it's basically a collection of subsets. And now we're gonna compare topologies. So suppose T T prime two topologies given on set X. If T prime contains T, we say that T prime is a finer than T. If this is properly contained, then it's strictly finer. And on the way around, it's coarser. <laughs> and it's comparable, which means that this or this holds. So one of them should be finer than the other one. And <laughs> to study topology, <clears throat> we have to introduce um, uh, a useful concept, which is called a basis basis for topology so we were giving a smaller collection of subsets of x and then we define the topology in terms of these subsets okay so we're giving giving smaller subsets and we're going to define the topology with these subsets so a basis for topology is a collection of subsets such that these two condition holds first for every x there is at least one element containing this all right and if x belongs to the intersection of two subsets, if x is in two of them, then there is another one such that this holds. Okay? So if you have b1 and b2, b1, b1, let me draw a diagram, just draw a diagram. So, nah, let me draw, use this one. So if you have b1, b2, this is b1, B2, this is your x, x, then you have another B3, such that this is true, okay? So, and then we're going to define a topology generated by the basis B, the collection. So, the generating process is this. So, the U is open if... For any x and u, there is a basis element such that it contains x and is a subset of u. So for any x, we have a basis element such that it contains the x and is a subset of u. So we make a notation. Oh, we, we note that each basis element is open. Why? Because so for, for any x and b, we just pick the b itself, then b is a subset of itself. Right? <laughs> so b is open. And we have to check that this is indeed a topology, right? We have to check this is a topology. So, <coughs> empty set is vacuously true because to check it's open, at least we need some elements, but if there's no element at all, which is vacuously true, it's not important. It's just, it's true. <coughs> and X is open by definition. Why? Because we look at this. For each X, there's at least one element, B containing X. Right? This is like a definition of basis. So x is open, right? For any x and x, there's a b such that x. For any x such that b is an x. Well, this is just the definition. So we're good. And then we're going to check the arbitrary union and finite intersection. So consider a collection of open sets. And we show that their union is still open. Okay? So we let x be in u. If x is in u, then x is in some u alpha. Then for this u alpha, there's a b such that this is true, which means that if this is a subset of u alpha, then this b is a subset of u, which means that u is open, right? Because we have x be u, and then we find a b such that um, x and b, and b is a subset of u, so u is open. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And to check the finite intersection, we take u1, u2 open sets, and we let x be in their open set, uh, be in their intersection. And we want to show that, oh, this set is also open. So it's, it's pretty not really hard. So for u1, which is full by definition, which is a b1 such that this is true, and b2, right, likewise. And then we know that x is in b1 and b2. 
right? And by definition, we have a B3 such that this is true. This is the definition, right? And this holds, right? Because this, then we have U1 intersect U2 is in the topology. Why? Let's just do this again. So for X, so for X being U1, U2, we can find a B3 such that x is in b3 and is a subset of u1 and u2 so u1 u2 is open by definition right so for finding session we just use like we just use induction because this the the intersection of this which is basically the intersection of this intersects with this this is like by the associativity law of logical i don't know statements i don't know why yeah and we're done you just you easy induction right but okay, with <laughs> these are these are not straightforward enough, right? But we have to um we have got some like useful properties. Is that like oh to describe this topology we have a useful thing, which is this lemma. So B is the basis of topology. The topology generated by the basis is basically the collection of all unions of all elements. Just a collection of all unions of elements, right? <laughs> this is a good way to describe the topology generated by a basis. It's very, very useful. Okay, so to show that um, this T should be the topology T. To show that the topology is equal to the union of all B and basis elements to the collection of the collection of all unions, the collection of all unions, and this is basically by definition, right? Because elements in B are open, right? Elements in B are open, and all unions of elements B are still open. So the collection, the collection of all the sets. So basically, you're having collection of open sets, which is, of course, included in the topology, right? So this is by definition. And for this direction, so the topology, every open set can be expressed as a union of basis elements. So we check, oh, if U is open, then we pick X and U. Right? And by definition, we have a BX such that this is true. Right? Then, we know that the union of BX is equal to U. Right? For all X and U. Right? Well, this is like... <coughs> this direction is straightforward, and this direction is also straightforward. Because every BX is in U, so the union of them is still in U. And U is a subset of this because we, we run through every X in U. And which means that every open set can be expressed as a, as a union of basis elements. So we're done, right? And this is a very useful characterization of basis generating a topology. But so far we're doing like, we're from basis and then we're generating a topology. What about we go backwards? We're given a topology. What can we say about the basis? <laughs> well, here's a useful lemma. So X of the topology says, and suppose that the C is a collection of open sets, such that for each open set, there's a C element such that this is true. Then we know that C is a basis. Okay. <laughs> to, so to prove this, first, we have to know that the first thing we have to check is that this collection of sets is indeed a basis. And then the second thing we have to check is the given topology is the same as the topology generated by the basis. Okay? After these two steps, we're done. So let's do the first step. So if C is a basis, right? I have to check C is a basis. Remember the definition of a basis, right? So we know that for any x and x, we know that x is open, right? 
x is open. So we know that there is a c such that x and c subset x. This is by our hypothesis, right? This is by our hypothesis. And and we know now let x be c1 intersect with c2, but c1 and c2 are open, right? c1 and c2 are open. So the c1 intersect c2 is the open set u. Then we have another element, c3, right, such that this is true. Well, this, these two conditions satisfied mean that c is a basis. Well, c is a collection of open sets, right, yeah. So when, so they're all open. Okay. Now, the second thing we have to check is that the topology itself is equal to the topology generated by the set c. So for this direction, so we let u be in the topology. So u is open, right? Then we let x and u. By hypothesis, we have a c set that this is true. Right? Then u is in the topology generated by c, by definition. Right? Yeah, this is like the definition of generating topology by a basis for any element there's a basis element such that right so here for any element we have a c such that this is true so so u is open okay now for this direction we'll let w be in this topology then we know that as a union of this so by hypothesis, is a union of open sets, right? Because C is a collection of open sets, right? Then we're done. Okay. Now, when we move on, we let, we kind of compare topologies. So we're going to use this, we're going to use this in the metric space section and then uh, for metric spaces, we're gonna use this, and then we gonna use this to prove that the number of circles and the number of rectangles are the same in the plane. I'm, I'm speaking loosely, but that's like basically saying that they have the same topology. <laughs> okay, so we let u, so the first is that um so two implies one right so for each x and x and basis element b this is another element from another basis such that b prime is a b so we have a set we give it x and we have two topologies and two bases right two implies one so we let we let u be in the t we wish we wish to show that u is in t prime, right? So let u be in t, and we let x be in u, okay? Then x be in u, then x is in x. Then we have a basis element, and we have pick a basis element b such that this is true, okay? This is by our hypothesis. Then by this condition, we have this this, right? Okay, with this being hold. Which means that this is hold, right? So let x be in u, and we have a basis b prime such that x is in b prime and in u. This is by definition that u is in the topology generated by b prime. Okay, so we're good. And the second direction, which is one implies two, so we just let x be in x and b and b such that x and b okay so this is by so we know that b is in the topology but this topology is coarser than t prime if this is coarser than t prime so b must be in the t prime right b is in b t prime which means that this is open in the topology if it's open in the topology and we have x is in b what we can say is that by definition, right, there's a B prime such that this is true. Right? 
and we're done. Okay. So this is a remark from the book, which is really interesting. So some students find this condition hard to remember. Where does the inclusion go? It's like, if you re recall the analogy between the topological space and the trunk load full of gravel. So the pedals are the basis elements. A pebbles. And it's smashed into dust. And dust particles are basis elements of the new topology. So the new topology is found in O1, and each dust particle is contained inside a pebble. <laughs> right? As uh, this one states, right? <laughs> so basically, you're having a lot of circles, a lot of rocks. Um, this is a really interesting. So you have a rocks, you have like, you have tons of rocks on a car, on a truck, right? And then you smash them into particles. Right? You smash them into particles. Well, well, then some of the particles say, nah, there's two. Some of the particles say these two, right? Are belong, they belong to, they belong to this one. They belong to this one, right? So if you smash them into dust particles, right? This is a good way to remember this theorem. If it's finer, then for each element containing x, we have another basis element such that this is subset. So this is finer. Finer. <laughs> More finer. Okay. Enough. So basis, topology generator basis is basically taking arbitrary union. But what about the finite intersection, right? What about finite intersection? So we're going to introduce a new concept, which is called a sub-basis. A sub-basis, S for topology, is a collection of subsets. First, its unions should be equal to X. And the topology generated by sub-basis is defined to be a collection of all unions, unions of finite intersections, okay? So, the first thing we have to do is check if T is topology, right? So, the only thing we need to show that is the set of all finite intersection is a basis. After that, the arbitrary unions, which is like by our lemma we proved before, is a topology, right? So, this is the only thing we need to show. The collection of all finite intersection is a basis. So, just check is a basis. We had X be an X. Then we know that x is in some s, right? Because the union is equal to x. So, so x is in the finite intersection, right? Exist. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me just reformulate this. Uh, let x and x then exist. S from B such that X and S. S and S. So S is in B. Right. Also S is in B. So which means that for any x and x, we can find an s and b such that and right. Okay, so this is the first condition of a basis. And the second condition of the basis is that oh you have two two elements from here. Now, their intersection again is in the finite intersection, right? So, trivial. 
So this is indeed a topology. So the thing is that we're given a subbasis, and we're taking finite intersections, we get a basis. And for bases, we're taking arbitrary union again, we get a topology. So this is a beautiful diagram. And I think we're done for the first lecture of general topology, introductory lecture.